truly mental illness. Alex Jones had on Marjorie Taylor Greene, the dumbest person in Congress <laughs> for just an incredible discussion. So I have a couple of clips here. The first clip, I don't really have all that much to say, but the second clip, I'm going to break down a lot of the bullshit coming from Marjorie Taylor Greene. But first, here is that first clip. Marjorie Taylor Greene, MTG, who I hope becomes president one day. Hell, she'd probably be better than Trump coming up in, in 2024. Can we get you to run for president in the next few years? Because I think I think you're one of the few people uh, that would probably have a better voting record uh, and have a better chance than winning than even Trump. Or maybe a uh, Green DeSantis uh, ticket? <laughs> well, Alex, I, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm I'm a very strong supporter of President Trump, but in the future, we'll we'll definitely see what happens. I'll see what the people think about something like that. I would take Trump over <laughs> Marjorie Taylor Greene any day. Uh, that said, they're both completely insane. But Jesus Christ, can you imagine? Can you imagine? Marjorie Taylor Greene and Ron DeSantis, that would be just absolutely devastating. But this next clip gets into a lot of the bullshit that Taylor Greene has been pushing throughout this pandemic, and I'm going to correct all of it. So here we go. Prep your brain for this stupidity. This is truly mental illness. Wearing a mask today after two years of this Chinese virus that has infected our country, um, this man-made Chinese virus that Dr. Fauci sent our tax dollars to and contributed to, but people still wearing masks. I mean, it's truly mentally ill. We know the masks don't work and the vaccines don't work. People that are vaccinated are still getting COVID, but I think that people really have blood on their hands that have stopped the, the prescriptions of ivermectin, refuse people who have had sick family members in the hospital of not being able to take ivermectin or any other kind of life-saving treatment or therapy. I mean, I truly think that we need to investigate all of these people and investigate the deaths that are reported on the VAERS system and hold people accountable because it's Dr. Fauci and anyone at the CDC or anyone involved that stopped life-saving treatments and therapies and people died. Well, I think they're guilty of murder. All right. That was a brain worm symphony. Just absolute madness. So let's break it down, shall we? There was masks don't work. Uh, vaccines don't work. Life-saving ivermectin. <laughs> That's a quote, life-saving ivermectin. Um, deaths report on the VAERS system. Got to investigate those. All right, let's uh, get through all of this. First, I guess the, the least crazy of all the crazy cl claims here are the potential origins of COVID-19, which is still being investigated. There isn't really a confirmed idea of where it came from, though recent reports do point to um, the pandemic origins, point straight to the food f uh, market in Wuhan. That said, a lab leak is certainly possible. There is a lab in Wuhan dedicated to research of similar virus strains. So not out of the question, still being looked into, but um, so that's, let's put that aside. Everything else is completely, obviously on its face, completely insane. So let's start with uh, VAERS. I've used this quote quite a bit because I think it just, it perfectly explains why you cannot trust the VAERS data. So in a July 2005 web post, Dr. James R. Laidler wrote, quote, the chief problem with the VAERS data is that reports can be entered by anyone and are not routinely verified. To demonstrate this, a few years ago, I entered a report that an influenza vaccine had turned me into the Hulk. The report was accepted and entered into the database. You can claim on VAERS that a vaccine turned you into the Hulk because it is self-reporting. Yes, doctors can report, but also you can self-report. There are also, of the deaths that actually are real, of people that were vaccinated and died, it doesn't mean they died from the vaccine. You can be reported as dying, or, or you could have died in a car accident. And because you were vaccinated, you could be reported to the VAERS system as, oh, this person was vaccinated and they died. Yeah, but it's because of the car accident. It wasn't because they got vaccinated. So the VAERS data is just not trustworthy. Now, there have been patterns found in the past. In, in the mid-90s, they found a certain pattern with a very um, uh, unique uh, impact of one virus on, on kids. And it... It ended up being a very tiny, you know, uh, thing, 
But yes, the VAERS data has in the past been used to find, you know, these sorts of, uh, of issues with certain vaccines. But when it comes to deaths, you, that's like that's one you definitely can't <laughs> trust because of the amount of people that have just died for other reasons, but were vaccinated at the time. Now, let's get to uh, masks don't work. The idea that masks don't work is so stupid. So there is actually a real study done on this. Surgical masks, this is from Stanford, surgical masks reduce COVID-19 spread, large scale study shows. So a large randomized trial led by researchers at Stanford Medicine and Yale University found that wearing a surgical face mask over the mouth and nose is an effective way to reduce the occurrence of COVID-19 in community settings. So in this case, the researchers enrolled nearly 350,000 people from 600 villages in rural Bangladesh. Those living in villages randomly assigned to a series of interventions promoting the use of surgical masks were about 11% less likely than those living in control villages to develop COVID-19, which is caused by infection with the coronavirus during the eight-week study period. The protective effect increased to nearly 35% for people over 60 years old. So what's important to point out here, a lot of this, this is um, people that were even in the controlled setting were still... I'm sure in many cases wearing masks. The difference here is really the education aspect of it. So when you educate and inform people, hey, you should be wearing a surgical mask that has an impact on those people. They tend to wear a mask more often. And because of that, you're seeing less of a spread of COVID-19 in those specific communities where they were recommended to wear surgical face masks. So yes, masks work. We knew this before just based on um, uh, other, uh, you know, uh, studies and in, in, in an analysis of the mask. But here's an actual large study, 350,000 people is a lot of people for a study that shows you uh, that the masks do indeed work. Now, the other one, uh, <laughs> let's go through these. Vaccines don't work now. Oh, geez, the vaccines don't work. Of course, Taylor Green, MTG, whatever the hell her name is, is not going to point out that, well, when looking at deaths, they definitely do work because the vast majority of deaths are from those who are unvaccinated. But let's just look at data here from the New York Times. So, I mean, data point after data point here. Weekly cases in New York City, not fully vaccinated. Look how much higher the cases are compared to the vaccinated. Daily average cases in Seattle area, not fully vaccinated. Look how much higher it is. More. Weekly hospitalizations in New York City, not fully vaccinated. Look how high the data is or how high the, the result is. Daily average hospitalizations in Seattle, same thing. I mean, we can go through all of this. The death gap, not fully vaccinated versus vaccinated. So not fully vaccinated versus vaccinated in Seattle. So we see again and again, the vaccines work. I don't know why these politicians want to, you know, kill their own supporters. I, I really don't. Because it doesn't help them <laughs> to, you know, kill off their audience, kill off their voters. But they are spreading bullshit. Even Donald Trump is in support of vaccines and the booster and has advocated for them. But it doesn't matter with some of these people. Okay, last one. Ivermectin, the life-saving ivermectin. <laughs> Claims Marjorie Taylor Greene, life-saving ivermectin. So this came up recently. There's a lot of ways I could have covered this part of it, but this story came up recently. Joe Rogan, after saying that he's going to be a little more careful with, you know, COVID misinformation, he put out a tweet thinking that he was sharing an article that, in fact, ivermectin is effective. But it turns out he didn't click the link because if you go to the actual link, there's a correction saying ivermectin showed antiviral effect against Omicron research, not against COVID-19, not against Omicron. So there's clinical trials going on right now. There is not an impact currently. Now, maybe in the future, they're researching it. Maybe in the future, they will find, hey, this actually does work, but currently it does not. So ivermectin is approved for use for parasites and other conditions in humans and animals. While there is no clinical trial evidence that it is effective against coronavirus, research is currently underway. So they are doing, you can wait for this research. I think it's Oxford University. Wait for this to come out then you can have your own, um, uh, you know, we, we will see that then, I guess. But there's been other studies showing there has been no impact of it. But you can't claim it's life-saving when it currently is not life-saving. When previous studies have shown it's not life-saving, there's a trial going on, maybe you'll be lucky, and it is. But currently, it is not. 
just the amount of bullshit that comes out of these people's mouths while they are being considered for president, I, I can't even imagine.